Welcome back to Redneck's Dirty Hands. I'm Christina, and today... Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's my line. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Redneck's Dirty Hands. I'm Pete, and today we are going to be going over D-Ron's uh, new to him 2018 Sidewinder. That thing there, we call that the sausage because, uh, well, it's pretty big, right, baby? <laughs> That's what she said. So, uh, this is new to him. He doesn't know anything about it. We had it out on the lake with Billy. We were doing the uh, radar runs with your mama and his sled there. And uh, do you, we were using that as the taxi going back and forth for parts and whatnot. He just bought it off Marketplace not too long before that. So it's a mystery. We don't really know. This thing's got a whack load of K on it. But I mean, it's a Yamaha four stroke. So we know the K isn't really much an issue for the engine. But the chassis and stuff, who knows? Uh, it's got like 23,000 kilometers on it, I think. But. Uh, He's planning a trip to uh, Quebec because that's the only place they got snow, eh? Don't you know? What's our snow conditions here in Ontario, baby? Uh, zip, zero. Nada. So it's raining. raining. <laughs> we got lots of fog, <laughs> lots of mud. Uh, D-Ron and a bunch of fellas, Dean and uh, some other guys, they're going to take all their sidewinders and other sleds. They're going to drive to uh, Mount, uh, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation mm -hmm. of it, Mount Valen or Valen. Mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. Looks beautiful. They got lots of snow, so they're going to take the sleds out there. So let's uh, do an oil change on this thing. A little bit of a preseason. Doesn't really need a whole lot. D-Ron's already gone through the track and all that. Everything looks good. So we're just going to check the fluids, make sure everything's good for him to go and uh, walk you through it. All right. So we'll take a little walk around on this thing. It's a factory two up. I've never seen one like this before, but uh, this thing is pretty big. I think we're going to need a roadie for this trip, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's take a trip around this thing. 2018 Sidewinder. Everybody knows that these things are awesome, reliable, fast. Uh, it's got the, the comfy, the big windshield on there and these mirrors. He had to put these mirrors on. Funny thing is, he bought this off Marketplace. The pictures of it and the ad on Marketplace had mirrors on it. And then when he went to get it, had no mirrors on it. So the fella took them off. When you're running in Quebec, you gotta have mirrors in Quebec, so D-Ron had to put them on. It already had the holes and everything for it, so I mean, bucked out there. She's got a little bit of a wider seat. She's not, <laughs> not on a diet, this one. <laughs> She's got a wide bottom, but uh, the factory two up seat's got the handles. This thing's got the, you know, it's pretty handy. It's got the heated uh, visor cord, you know, heated seat. It's got the saddlebags. It's got this one here. This one here, and then it's got this cubby storage here. It's like an old station wagon from back in the day. Like, you can carry everything in here. Yeah. And, look at that. Hmm. It's got a second gas tank in here. So you got your original tank, which, I mean, these things are pretty good on fuel, and you get quite a bit of range out of them, but uh, this thing is built for the long haul. Like, you want to go on a long trip? This is the rigs. That's pretty cool. It's got this factory two-up seat, and it's pretty simple to take off. This is almost... Like, we just put that uh, two-up seat on Remington's uh, Polaris 850. And it went together pretty simple. Like, Polaris did a pretty good job designing that. This factory kit on here, all you got to do is pull these clips up. It pops right off. Same thing with the main seat. And then you can see it's got... A second fuel line, you got your main fuel line, you've got pump in the tank on these things, but there's a second line coming back through and goes down in to this tank back here. Oh, D-Ron's already got her all fueled up, ready to go. <laughs> He's pretty excited to go snow wheeling. <laughs> I mean, I probably would too. So. so, I don't know if there's an actual, I don't think there's a pump in this tank. I think that's just a pickup line. There must be a, another pump up front or something, I don't know. Tool kit in here, spare belt storage in there. Nice one. We're going to, uh, I think we're going to. Ra, 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 the place. Yeah, sorry, dear. <laughs> uh, we're going to upgrade. He's got a stock Yamaha belt on this. Uh, you know what we're going to do. This thing's a big old sausage, a big sled. Yeah, this thing definitely needs to go to the max. We're going to put an Ultimax on this thing for him, too. So, uh, and then these side bags here. Oh, there you go. Like this is a 146 inch, like she's pretty long in the track here too. And it's got these little, like a leaf springs, mono springs or something each side. So this thing here, I mean, I'm sure the sled itself just being the, with the extra fuel tank and the seat and all that, a lot of extra weight there. 
You know, we had that video back in the day, the, uh, called it the honey hauler there, that 550 classic factory two up. This thing here is, <laughs> this is the heavy honey hauler, you know? <laughs> so if Deeron and the boys are up there in Quebec and, you know, Deeron's cruising around and finds himself a healthy uh, French Canadian lady there, he can uh, crank this sucker up here. Oh yeah, there you go. And then they can run back to the hotel, no problem. <laughs> Well, yeah, just double check, just to show you. Look at that, 23,247. This thing runs like a top, so uh, you know what? We love those Yamaha motors just for that reason, and now we just gotta check and see if everything else is okay. We're gonna do an oil change on it. So, pull the panels off. Done it time and time again, same as your mama and belly sled, all that. Side panels come off super easy, just two clips. Plug your gauge cluster. You got two Zeus fasteners. I'm coming. <laughs> Come on, baby. I'm coming. You got these little Zeus fasteners here. Quarter turn. Same here. Good panel. Oh, we got. And then we can have a look in here. It's got a Dalton sticker on the airbox there, so uh, somebody's obviously put either springs or rollers or something into the clutches, I would think, but uh, we're going to uh, have a quick boo. Just want to check these rollers, make sure, I don't know if you can see that, they're spinning nice. You just don't want any movement, you don't want them walking around if they're worn out on the pin there. Never ever turn this clutch backwards. If you're ever gonna turn it without the engine running and all that stuff, only ever go forwards. If you turn it backwards, see the timing chain tension on these slack off, it'll skip timing and uh, that's, a, that's a bad thing. These are all decent, so we'll pop this belt off, have a look at it. These ones are pretty tight. Somebody's, uh, this is not factory, that's an add on there. You can set your uh, deflection and everything with this fella. So I'm just gonna push it all in. By hand, hopefully these ones, the spring tension on these turbos is uh, pretty tight, so it's gonna test my man hands here. Hmm. <laughs> Come on over this side, baby. So basically, same thing. It takes a lot of force to do this by hand, but you know what? I like to, I'm a little bit stubborn, so I usually try to do it by hand first before getting out the tools. So I just push it in and twist. The belt drops down in there. So then basically just hold the belt in and then pull it out and around. Giddy boo. Factory Yamaha belt on there. Looks pretty good. But uh, hold on. I got some. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Run it to the max with Ultimax. Further side winders with the stock clutches and all that. XS 825 to stay alive. So that sucker there will be going on there. I'm gonna put her on, set the deflection, get everything. You know, you basically, you need to put three decent heat cycles through these things to not so much break them in, but just get them happy with life, you know. So, you know, you take care of your belt, it'll take care of you. So, you got to kind of run them up to temperature, let them cool down three times in a row before you start giving it the beans. But if you do, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, these are the best belts on the market. So, there's got to be a few things going on in this video. What I think I'm probably going to do is I'll do it. We'll focus on like just doing the oil change first. Uh, that way, anybody that you know has a sidewinder and just want to be able to do an oil change on it, they can watch that part and then carry on with their life. Or if they want to hang out for everything else, um, because this has twenty-three thousand kilometers on it, and Darren doesn't know the history of it, I think we should probably investigate. You know the drive bearing on it. Uh, probably going to pull the oil tank and the like the chain case cover off. We'll have a look in there. These things, the top uh, sprocket has a bushing in it and they're known to wear out and cause issues. And then the tensioner also has a screw that can kind of work its way out and come loose and uh, that <laughs> ends your chain case. Kind of like that 1100 turbo video we just did. So there's a lot of similarities from this to that one, but I think just for peace of mind for D-Ron, he's planning to go to Quebec to put on, you know, 500 to 1000 kilometers. We'd kind of like them to be trouble free so he doesn't have to tow this big heavy bitch. So, we already know he's already gone through the whole 
skid and track and wheels and all that. He's already put new runners on it, so we don't have to touch any of that, but we do want to get in and check a few things. So let's uh, let's change the oil, baby. Oh, wait, oh, wait. So we got to get underneath this thing. There's an access panel uh, right in the middle. It's good that we got it on these uh, wheelie dollies, lifts it up about five, six inches, so it's easier to crawl underneath there. Uh, there's a few T30, I think they are, torque spits. We'll pull that panel out, and that way we'll be able to get at the drain bolt on the motor and the oil filter. Uh, on Apex, not as easy as these ones, at least when they put the Yamaha motor in these, they may do it an oil change. A little bit simpler, an Apex, you gotta blow that thing right apart. I'll do a video on one of those coming up too, but uh, we gotta go down to the basement here. <laughs> I'm filming, so go ahead. <laughs> You're filming right now? Nice one. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we got these four Torx bolts here. Just swing that sucker out of the way, you don't have to take it all the way out. And then, up in here, oh my god. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you get the camera in here, baby? <laughs> <laughs> So up in here, there is an itty bitty oil filter right there. You can get perfect access to it. And then there's an Allen bolt here with a copper washer. You pop that sucker out and she'll drain some oil out of there too. So, so we got the Yamalube oil change kit from uh, Blackstock Motorsports there. And it kind of gives you four liters of the oil there, the 040. That's you know, <laughs> that's a pretty stuffy short little filter it's got on there. Mm. Yeah, little ring in there. Copper crush washer for that little bolt that's underneath. So we'll go back under, grab a drain pan. I had one here somewhere, right here. Let's uh, make a mess. It's a little bit awkward <laughs> down in here to say the least. Nice. But I got my little, my adjustable oil filter. Pliers, wrench, whatever you want to call it. Give that a little spin. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Knock the light over. <laughs> <Pretty fun>. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't look too too dirty, but so I mean that ain't so bad getting that off. Let that drain a bit. Alright, camera loose. Try not to get your phone in the oil. <laughs> yeah. And get it in here. Hmm. Oh, right in the drain. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That's why it's called Redneck's Dirty Hands. Nice one. We'll let that drain while that's going. Now we're going to pull this uh, footwell in. So it's got two. Torx bits down here. What are they? T25s. Then two more up here. And then I'm just going to pull these ones out too, just because we are going to be pulling the chain case off of there. So now, with that out of the way, we can see the bottom of the oil tank here. Here's the oil line coming out of the tank here. Down in here, there's a drain. That bolt. It's a little bit tight access, but with a, <laughs> a quarter inch drive ratchet. Get on there. And I got a 14 mil deep socket on it. I'll see if I can crack her loose. Get it cracked loose. And then before you take it all the way out, in that oil change kit, they give you a paper funnel from Yamalu for filling this thing up. But because the drain is in such a bitch of a spot, there's no panel underneath it. Like when you drain that out, it's just going right into the belly pan. There's a freaking piece of insulation in there for the exhaust, so it soaks all into that. So I'm gonna stuff this guy all the way in there and then poke it out the hole in the footboard here and then i'm gonna pull that uh bolt out of there and hopefully mm. <laughs> it'll drain out here instead of <laughs> all the way over there <laughs> so cross <laughs> wish me luck baby you can do it
Okay, there we go. Ooh. Oh, look at that. It's so far so good. It's coming out. It's going right out the hole there. We're not making a huge mess yet, baby. And there's that little o ring that comes in the kit there. Oh, I forgot. You could take the oil cap off to help it uh, vent and flow even faster. Look at her go now. Oh, yeah. All right, so I got the new o ring on the drain bolt for there. So we'll stuff this guy. Out of there. Let's see if I can bring this fella back up in here. This is where dating the mechanic's pretty handy, isn't it? <laughs> pretty good with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> there we got her started. Perfect. Cinch that up, tighten it up, and then uh, I won't fill it up, obviously, right now because I plan on taking the oil tank and chain case cover off anyway to check the gears and everything in there, but at this point, you know, you tighten this one up and then we'll put the copper crush washer and the new oil filter on underneath. And then you would just add your oil into here. You've got a sight tube here. So as you fill it up, the oil's gonna come up the tube and then you got your level minimum and maximum on here. So you just fill it up till you're in there and then you're gonna fire up the snowmobile, let it run for, you know, 10 seconds or so, shut it off. Get, that gives time for the oil filter to fill up. And then uh, set your level again. You want it in between, anywhere in between these two lines. And then uh, just keep checking it. Make sure you don't overfill it, but uh, that's pretty much how she goes. So we'll tighten this up and then put the oil filter on. So then, yeah, get rid of that old copper washer. New one on. And then I'll climb underneath. I'll grab that filter. You want to get on the other side and we'll spin her on, baby. So you just want to put a little bit of engine oil on the O-ring of the filter there. Spin it on. It's weird, upside down and backwards, trying to tighten this thing. <laughs> Come on. It's hard to film, too. <laughs> I'm be under here and see what I'm doing. Jeez, I don't know if I'm holding my tongue right. Mm. Oh, there we go. And then same thing, oil filter, just hand tight. Perfect. And snug this guy down. You don't gotta go crazy with it. You just gotta crush that washer. That should be good. I'll just swing this fella back around. Tickety boo. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so because we we're gonna pull that off. I got to take the mufa later out of there. We got some Torx bolts, some 5 sixteenths or 8 mil head bolts. Uh, we're missing a bunch, so I got a feeling this has been out a few times or whatever over the years. I mean, over that kind of mileage, I wouldn't doubt it. So, now the only thing I'm kind of, I got my fingers crossed that the bolts for the muffler undo off the turbo because uh, they like to seize or gall up and you can't get them off. So we're in for a treat, I think. These fellas right here are not fun to do at any time, but uh, we'll see what we can do. All right, we got a T50 long Torx. That was toit like a toyga. Hopefully they all come out like that though. Hmm. Like those fellas are a bugger and they like to seize and they don't, it's not necessarily they strip, it's just they like cross thread or gall up coming out. So it's not fun. And you can see, see the marks on there? Somebody's been on that with vice grips. Same as this one here. Oh yeah. Right? Just for that reason because you can't get straight on these things either, right? Like this design, the way that the exhaust pipe comes out, it half covers this one and it covers that one. So I'm gonna... yeah, I can't even get the camera there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna grab some uh, vice grips. We'll clamp onto the tough ones too. Give them a hand undoing. So this is the last one. I cannot get straight onto it. Uh, so we're gonna try. Vice grips. Gotta crank these as tight 
as you freaking can. <sighs> then I'm gonna put a little bit of a pipe on here. There you go. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> no, I don't. Look at that. So then, that's coming out really nice. I got a good feeling though about this because there's by script marks on these that somebody has been in here and maintained this. So that's a good sign. Boom, shashawana. And then your little mm. gasket. Now we need pop a spring or two off and pull the muffler out. Down in here we've got one exhaust spring holding on there. So I, as you've seen before, I love using these uh, hose pliers there, the, doing the springs. If I can grab a hold of it and pull it off. Nice one. I think that's it. Pull straight up. And out. Just as these pins here slide into the grommets, hold it in place. And now we can see the rest of her. So, and I mean, if you want to adjust your chain and all that, you got to get the muffly. I think call it the mufflator. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get the mufflator out of the way. Mm -hmm. So you can, this is your adjuster here. So, but we're going to pull all these guys out. Pull this guy off, undo this line, this line, uh, this line. Pull the reverse motor actuator out of there. And we'll have a peek boo. Put our, put our eyeballs on it, right? Mm -hmm. Pull this little torque screw out. That's just a mount to hold. The hose is there. I dropped the screw somewhere in here. Right there. I'll undo this hose here. A little bit of oil up in there. This hose. Just like so. Now, plug for our electric motor. fell off. Speed sensor. And that can go off to the side. When I start to undo this one, you're going to see the uh, reverse motor kind of unload and clock this way. Relieve a little bit of tension. Or it should anyway, it might not. Just like so. You can see that's the little gear that uh, your motor keys into. So it's got the detent there. That keeps it locked. So uh, there's the shift fork inside, keeps it in uh, to engage so you have forward. And then the motor has to spin it off of there to put it in reverse. So all we gotta do is grab my pliers. Where did I put it? Let's grab the star wheel. Pull it out of there. Then you got your detent and spring. Now we'll undo all the bolts holding the case on. Oh yeah, they are tight. You want to make sure you only undo these back ones for the, the cover of the chain case. You don't want to undo these ones that bolt the oil tank to that. This is sealed from the factory with the goop. If you take that off, it's a bugger to uh, get back on and keep it sealed. So. Just take it all out as an assembly. We're on the last one. Well, it already looks better than uh, Remington's 1100, eh? A little bit. <laughs> There's not shards of stuff in this one. No. This here, that's a steel shim. It was sitting right on the inside there. It usually falls off when you pull this off. It just goes it would just be sitting on there like that. So this is the inside. Now there's a, let's see, somebody's already been in here, okay. 
This one here, this screw is known to back out and it'll fall out and then, you know, it gets scrambled around here like a blender and uh, totally grenades this. So it looks like there's some marks on there. Somebody's already been in here. I think they peened it right there. It looks like with a punch to lock it into place, a couple of spots. So yeah, somebody's definitely been in here checking her out. So I'm thinking we're not gonna have any issues, but oh yeah, see, look, I can already tell. Darren, you might have done good. This thing's got some upgrades. Let me pull this off here. Okay, so we're gonna pull this guy off just for now. And I'm gonna pull this reverse gear. This here is a reverse. These are the little teeth that key on to your top uh, sprocket. And this has brass little uh, shifter forks on there the original ones are like a plastic and they'll break over time so this is an upgrade so uh, i'm liking what i'm seeing this is you know we probably didn't have to pull this apart because obviously somebody was taking good care of this thing now the tensioner might be a little bit slack off i mean yeah that needs to be tightened up i'm sure this gear has been replaced the uh, the bushing in there is probably good, but we'll pull the little C-clip off of there. We'll pull the C-clip off of here, pull all the gear set off and uh, double check it. So we'll pull this top snap ring off. These ones are way better than those snap rings in the, the 1100 of Turby there. They were a pain in the butt. And same thing when you're taking it all apart. Just keep track of everything, you know, if you take a snap ring off and a washer off, take a picture of it that way when you go to put it all back together, you know where it is and you're not standing there scratching your head going, hmm. where's this washer go? <laughs> <laughs> and then your YouTube and videos is like, just show me a clip of where that freaking washer went. Hmm? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> like Plinko. And that way we can pull the reverse off. And there'll be another steel shim on the back side, or there should be. Ooh. And there isn't. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and here I was thinking everybody was doing good. There's supposed to be another one of them back in here. See, maybe he didn't take pictures and then put it back. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> And then the top one and bottom one should just slide right off of here. And we got our gear set. There is a collar. That's a aftermarket. So this is an upgraded top uh, sprocket on here. So that guy was on there like so. Oh yeah, that's... Uh, that is not stock by any means. <laughs> <laughs> so this has a good upgraded uh, sprocket on it. Although this looks small. I think this is probably like only a 21 tooth. Oh, we should put a 22 tooth on here. Let, let Darren oh. really dangle. <laughs> <laughs> Hair will be flowing in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> What's the bottom on this thing? 41 tooth. These are slow gears, man. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, and you can see there, that is tight, right, smooth, zero play. So he's all good there. Uh, the only thing I'm not sure is there should be one of those washers on the backside there. So I'm gonna have to track one of them down, I guess. And yeah, this roller on the tensioner is nice and smooth and tight. So we are looking good. Okay, so I went through my uh, drawer of uh, miscellaneous parts and I had one of those. So we'll put one on there. Throw her back in. Maybe we'll talk D Ron into changing the gears at some point for a little bit of more top end on this one. Maybe even put a tune in it, make changes from the. <laughs> The sausage to the spicy sausage. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, what did Billy get on this? 100? When we went yeah, up I think he just hit 100. Yeah. I think it'd be hilarious if you get this thing <laughs> rocking 
120 plus with two right. people on her. <laughs> so then this guy here, it's got all these wonky cutouts. There's a rubber isolator that slips on over top of these. You just got to key it uh, back together. Find the happy spot. The other steel shim on that side. And then while we're here, I think we're, we're going to tighten that up because that can get into, if you look here, I don't know if you can see yeah, back in there, <laughs> that aluminum post looks like it's carving a little bit away at it. So we'll tighten her up a little bit. Crack this jam nut loose and then we got to back this off. We're going to tighten it up because this is pretty loose and the spec for this is the service manual says to screw this in finger tight and then back her out one and a half turns so let's uh let's do that so that right there is finger tight chain is guitar string tight so now one and a half turns honey so i think the best way to do this is We'll come up here, we'll do a quarter, half, three quarter, one, quarter, half. So we got a little bit of play here. It can hit the uh, bottoms out on the bolt, but nowhere at any point does the chain get close to that aluminum post that the reverse is going into so before it was actually hitting it so that's no good so we'll lock the sucker down gotta hold this one and tighten this one Put that down. boom shagalaka top gear back in it's locked in all the way and then we can uh, pop the cover back in there tighten it back up and uh, put all necessary fluids back in gear oil engine oil and then we're done with that part <laughs> whoa ho, ho, ho. getting ahead of myself almost forgot the snap ring down here at the bottom that would have been uh, that would have been a treat hmm. <laughs> d-ron up in Quebec Okay, now let's put the cover back on. <laughs> you just gotta wiggle it around, find the right angle of the dangle to get her seated right up in there, just like so. And then start popping some of these guys back in. You just gotta cinch these down, do like a crisscross pattern. tight and right so now we just got to put all the hoses on eh? you hoser <laughs> <laughs> once we get these all tight we can fill both the chain case with some gear oil and then the oil tank with some engine oil and then I'm wondering I'm wondering if we really even have to check the drive bearing after checking out the chain case here like it's been well serviced. It's got some good updates to it. Uh, I know I said should check it. So <laughs> I just want to. <laughs> there's beer in there calling my name. <laughs> right. Like, you know, video's over. <laughs> You're good to go, d -Ron. It's for like, what, 10 o'clock at night? <laughs> it is, yeah. Thanks for helping me out here, by the way. No problem. Throw some gear oil in here through the... Reverse motor, motor, the reverse <laughs> motor hole. And then uh, make sure the level comes up in the sight glass there. You should be good. <laughs> She's full, baby. Painting the patuka? Yeah, these are a bit of a pain in the butt to get off. So we got some, the Yamalube 0W40 uh, chain case full. So we're just gonna start adding here and then uh, 
keep an eye on that tube. When the level comes up, we stop. One down. We just did two and I don't know, a little bit over a half, I guess. And that has put it right to the max line there. So that should be good enough for us to, um, once we, I'll put the reverse motor and everything all back in, plug it all, everything back in. Fire it up, and then we'll just double check the level after that and top it back up, and then the uh, oil change part of it's done. So if you were just doing the oil change on it, maybe I'll clip this to the, after we drained it so you don't have to watch the whole thing, but uh, once you get it all back together, you just gotta top it up and take your boo away. Okay, so we just gotta put the uh, detent and spring back in here. Like It can only go one way. It's got the notch out there for this bolt over here just like so then the shift fork on the inside you will make sure that it is pushed all the way that way and then this guy we're gonna drop in a key it'll go straight in detent and line up i just gotta pry this guy down a little bit that goes straight in like this so and then we are going to rock this guy back off a little bit put it like that so when we set this motor in here just like so that'll be good there this cover has got to go back on plug them all back in all righty Put well back in, put some other bolts in. We're almost done. Drop the mufflator back in. Gotta line up all three pins at the same time here. Okay, I think we got it. Mm -hmm. like so. so. We got all these bolts tight just tightening up that one with the vice grips again that's how we have to take it off so boom we can drop the hood on well, i'll put this heat shield on but uh, we'll put the hood on spark it up make sure uh, the oil level's good carry on Eve on sit good even Okay, um, we're good to uh, spark it up. Let it run for just a few. see it. All right, well I got the light wedged in here and you can see the reflection. There's no oil in this range so we gotta add some more. It's coming. Ooh. Yeah, she's coming. <laughs> All right, I'd say mm, looks good. Well, that's good. So not bad out of that whole oil change tip. Got about a quarter of a liter left. It doesn't take the full four liters but uh you know you can run it a little bit and double check it again there is a little bit extra if it needs it but i think that's it now i guess we just gotta lift this big heavy pig up and uh we'll have to slack the track off i want to check that drive bearing for him just to make sure no issues on his trip so it's getting late we're getting tired <laughs> but he runs leaving he wants to load this thing up tomorrow so uh, pitter patter, get at her, right? <laughs> We're just gonna pop these little rubber caps into the axle. Crack the bolt loose. And then we'll back off the adjusters if I can get my wrench on there. there we go. Mm -hmm. All right, so the track's all the way loosened off. Uh, I got two 
8 mil bolts on the uh, cover for the brake roller. You gonna make it, honey? <laughs> I'll be fine, Trudy. <laughs> okay, now that's both of those out of there, and uh, oh, okay. Yeah, somebody definitely put some uh, thought into this and some maintenance. That that's got a what you call a drive shaft saver in there. So that's like a slug that goes on the inside, and you crank this down, it kind of expands inside there because these things are known for the drive bearing spinning on the drive shaft. Uh, so this thing here kind of swells it out, so it stops that from happening. So this probably is okay but i mean we're only three bolts away from pulling it out and seeing so three bolts and a c-clip so i guess yeah. we're already here we might yeah as well. might as well <laughs> <laughs> just gotta pull a little snap ring off the end there so the brake rotor will come off and then i'll climb underneath there's three 10 mil well the head of the bolts are 10 mil Bolting the caliper unit to the tunnel. I'll climb under here, get that one done. You don't have to film the whole thing. <laughs> so I got all those bolts off the backside, but this thing's got this drive shaft bearing saver or whatever. Which is a pain in the butt. Had to loosen the 10 mil Allen key bolt in there it off and then uh, try and get it out of there because I think it's expanded the drive shaft a little bit I can't get the uh, bearing housing to move off the drive shaft so this is interesting hmm. <laughs> it's definitely a pain in the butt Holy jeez oh, Louise. <laughs> that right there is a one style of a drive shaft saber, I guess. So it's just a wedge block. You tighten up that Allen key in there, it sucks this wedge up into there, which spreads. You can feel that's bumped up. So it's spreading, pushing on the inside because the drive shafts on these are hollow. So spreads it out so now hopefully there's no tension on there I can slide this thing off because it was not moving at all oh there you go you dirty dog Ooh, there you go Thank you. <laughs> there's D rounds lightweight brake rotor it's got a bunch of holes in it now you know what it does feel chunky does it? It does. That's so a good thing we did this then. Or you did this. <laughs> I supervised. <laughs> we did it, baby. We. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say we got to uh, we gotta change that. You got some? <laughs> Should be one around here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, he did pick one up from Blackstock when he got the oil change kit. This one is nice, tight, and smooth. Give that a feel, babe. Mm. How's that feel? Oh, yeah. Nice and smooth? Yeah. Okay. Now reach in, get your hands dirty, and feel that one. Oh, yeah, you can feel it. Yeah. Feel how it's all chunky? Yeah. That is no good. That's no good. That's no good. So now we gotta change it that. Ay, caramba. Pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> so this is basically the exact same as the last video I did with that. Uh, 1100 over there. The sidewinders are the exact same setup, so it's got this slinky style clip in here, which, oh, look at that, see? They got the tab out in this open section here, which you should never do. You should always have the tabs over here, so we gotta peel that out. And then, Gotta rig up my tool and get this fella out of here. So if you just didn't see the last video of the 1100, this is uh, 
part of my hub grappler kit for doing wheel bearings on cars that I use for doing this right on the sled so I don't have to uh, take anything apart. So I've got a cup that fits the housing here perfectly. And then I machined this guy to fit the back side of here. I got this big long nut. Uh, it's all threaded together. This is sitting on the housing flush here. So I'm going to put my impact gun on here. This is a one inch socket. Just hold this nut on this side. And that sucks the bearing right out of there. Right, like so. Hmm. You're not going to say it, honey? Tickety <laughs> pick. <laughs> I'm getting too tired here. <laughs> so then we take our new bearing, center it up in here. This cup here fits perfectly. We got it started there. So now uh, I should probably run the bolt and everything the same. Give it a couple of duggas. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. I call that Christina. <laughs> right. <laughs> beautiful. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. I'm going to go. mm. put this wave spring back in here. Just like so. And then we got the end going off into here, not out in this open area where it can get caught and ripped out. You know what I mean? Whoa. There we go. Come on. Now I gotta bolt the caliper back in there and then I'll make sure I'll get the clip in here and then we'll put that drive shaft saver back in. So I gotta climb underneath there and try and get those bolts started. So this is gonna be fun. Why don't you grab yourself a drink, honey? <laughs> this might take me a bit. Relax. <laughs> How's it going, babe? <laughs> not too bad. How are you making out? <laughs> no, not too bad. Just twisting my nuts. <laughs> twisting. You're doing a great job, dear. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we got them all started. We just got to mm. <laughs> tighten them in here and uh, have a nap, maybe. Right. <laughs> She's going on midnight. <laughs> all just to support our buddy D-Rod so he can go snowmobiling. Better have fun for us, too, D-Rod. Right. <laughs> Fix the fireball for me. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff's disgusting. <laughs> Ugh. All right, they're all tight. Calipers back on. Clip back in. Ah, brakes should be breaking. Nice one. Okay. Put the foot wells and all that stuff back in. Belt on. Adjust the track. Kick it. Oh my god. <laughs> to forget something. Yeah, I almost forgot. You might as well <laughs> might as well put this guy back in there. Probably work better. Right? Ooh. That went in a lot easier than <laughs> <laughs> then it came way. out. Crank her tight, baby. I'm not sure what the torque spec is going to be on this. It was fairly tight to undo, so. Boy, I think I felt my elbow click there. That... <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be it. The beer time? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I say we throw the uh, Ultimax belt on this sucker, button it up, and uh, get some sleep. <laughs> yes. I might need you <laughs> to hold the brake there for me though, darling, so I can uh, push this sucker. <laughs> so we're going to drop this Ultimax uh, XS825 on just so we can read it. They're not directional. Squeeze it. Yeah, squeeze her as tight as you can, baby. So basically what I got to do is I've got to, I'm going to push and twist this and I'm going to drop this belt down in there. 
like so. Boom. Shaka laka. Feeling like oh. Beauty. Oh, tighten up the track. Hmm. Okay, let's uh, check and see. Make sure we have all forward and backwards. We'll run the track. Make sure the alignment's good on it. Well, that was a late night. It's the next morning. We got waking up with the Timmies. d -Ron's already here, bright and early. He's like, is my sled done? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Packing his... I like your uh, suitcase there. I get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll beat up. <laughs> new one in here. <laughs> who, who needs actual luggage? Just grab the hefty garbage bags there. Yeah. He's going to go go to Quebec and try the sausage, eh? <laughs> Well, we think it's about ready to go. We, uh, you know, got the oil changed, did the drive bearing, all that. So we just got to slap her back together. Christine is still snoozing, so I've got to wait for her to come out too. But uh, let's button her back up and uh, get her loaded. Even going to take my trailer too, eh? Oh, yeah. Taking that too. Driving 10 hours. Jeez, yeah. So Christina and I, we just dropped the tools where they were. We were getting pretty tired, went in. And, I mean, today is New Year's Eve day so we got to get this thing back together loaded up so we can get into the beers hey eh, buddy oh, it's easier. <laughs> once we settle this uh, case back together we'll we'll dig in there and get into that case i'll put away all the tools <laughs> good old tool cards <laughs> more tools in there than i do in my toolbox all right slap her back together let's get her back together you've never owned a sidewinder you just bought this one now we know it's got good uh, good gears, good chains, yeah. drive shaft saber, the clutches are good. Feel confident going to Quebec? Oh yeah. yeah. But uh, just as a backup, you are going to take your old 06 Apex with how many K on it? Yeah, well, I'm taking that. It's got 45,000. It's just broke in. <laughs> old reliable. He doesn't trust the new Sidewinder, so he's going to take yeah. the old Apex with him too. I figure you're just taking this because of the factory two up, just in case you find yourself a uh, sweet French Canadian lady. Yes, that too. <laughs> Get yourself a poutine lover. You, <laughs> you be poutine her on here. <laughs> yeah, he didn't see. This is a, this is a big luxury for you. You're not used to this kind of stuff, eh? No, never this. Coming together. Coming yeah. together. What else? Here, this one next. This one next. <laughs> Boom, locked and loaded. Now that's got to be the easiest two-up seat to put on I think I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Well, now you need your luggage racks. Yeah, what are the, what, are, what kind of boxes are those? Your boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Beauty. There it is. Oh, oh the heavy honey hauler is ready to go. Oh, yeah. You got your uh, tool for adjusting, putting those heavy extra yeah. springs up, just in case you do find a lady, eh? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> if this led be a rocking. <laughs> yeah, gee, she's looking good, so I think, yeah. Maybe hit her with some SC1, you know. Get her real shiny. She looks good now, but after some of this stuff, the SC1, new bike in a can. I mean, you know, this is a sled. <laughs> Maybe it's a new sled in a can. This stuff's awesome, though. You just freaking hose her on. This thing's gonna look brand spanking new. Oh yeah. Just hit everything. Even the seat. Oh, <laughs> I need a seat belt then. 
<laughs> That's right. Shine her up. Get her looking good. Yeah. Clean as fast. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> There, she's looking nice and shiny there. Got a nice yeah. little logo on there. <laughs> and we'll let you run with the Yamama brand. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yamama is pretty she big. Might be on the back. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and if Yamama is on the back, I didn't realize it, but yeah, this one here, it's got this 12 volt power cord. It plugs into that adapter there, and even <laughs> the backup seat is heated. So, like this thing here, that's a Cadillac, man. Yes. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I think you done good on this one. Yeah? See how she handles. Beauty. So you're locked and loaded. We got the uh, safety budget cord going yeah. across the back. Computer holders. <laughs> <laughs> A positive. I love it. Oh, looks like d has got the best looking trailer backed up to the door here. We're ready to go. <laughs> Gonna load her up, boys. You gotta move your mama. <laughs> get, yeah. get the sausage out of here. <laughs> get your mama out of the way. Here comes hot mama. <laughs> Good morning, sweetie. Good The trailer's all locked and loaded. D-Ron and our buddy Dean are ready to go to Quebec to get some miles on because they're the only ones with snow. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Darren's got his new Sidewinder. She's all serviced up. Hopefully, no issues, right? Yeah. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Dean will tow him home if yeah. it breaks down. But uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. You know, just a little, uh, you know, check over for our buddy D-Ron. Make sure it's good to go. And, uh. We appreciate all the support, everybody tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, take her easy. Cheers.